Do you want to be interested or interesting? This question that has been helping us since business FOB in short, whereby Marshall Thurber and Bill Allen, our teachers in FOB, have given us the lessons. How many of you realize that you don't like salespeople because they are sleazy, they are slimy, they really push you to get the sale? And the outcome is one thing, get your sales, get a yes, no matter what. So I've learned many years ago, the concept of sales is to persuade, convince, or get the other party to say a yes. And sometimes because the salespeople have to push hard in order to achieve the objective, many times they may use things such as manip manipulative tactics. They might be using something called pressure in order to get a yes from you. So if you have been through that situation, you know the story, you know the drill. Why? Simply put, you don't like salespeople. That's what we have been hearing from so many people again, again, and again. They don't like salespeople because they are sleazy, they are snimy, they are scammy, they are pushy, whatever you call it. So what we are saying is that in order to create a sales, first of all, it's not about your action to push the person. It's not about getting a person a yes right away. You've got to be interested in the other person first. And many times when we say be interested, what exactly are we talking about? Now, let me give you an example. Suppose you and I haven't met each other and this is the very first time. Can I just pick up a product and say, shop it to you and buy? I can guarantee 100% of the chance you will say no to me. And you know what? If I'm a salesperson, I will push her and say to you, hey, why are you not buying? Why are you not saying yes to me? What's your problem? Sounds familiar. So a salesperson who, has, who is more professional, what they will do is this. They will not push the sales until they feel that it is ready to push. Not to say that they will never push. Worst thing is that some people just don't like sales. And what they do, never push. So you've got to learn when to push and what is the right time to push. So there's always say, uh, saying that you have to close, but you can't close early because it might not be the right time to close. But you also can't not close. So I say again, you cannot not close. You must close the sales. No sales, no income. End of story. Okay? So now, what is being interested? Be interested is basically to create affinity, to actually build rapport, to be able to enter into the other person's world first. So for example, if I were to meet you for the very first time, I would not put a product in front of you. I may create a conversation, build rapport, and create affinity. Find something in common in order to create a conversation. And at that stage, are you going to close? No way, you don't do that. So you're asking questions, you're taking your listening ears, actively picking the clues from the other guy and create conversations again and again and again. Now, if this is your first time meeting the guest or the prospect, I, I should say, would it be the right time to close? Maybe it's too early because the trust hasn't been built yet. So which means that you may not be expecting to close the sales right now during the first meeting. I closed my teacher instantly for 15 minutes, but I have to spend seven years for that 15 minute close. I'm not kidding you. So sometimes trust has to be built over time. If you have been to my Jackson one time, I think I think I've said in June, one of the one of my Jackets, Jack, one of my Jacksons, I said that trust can't be built overnight. It has to take or it has to be built overnight. So it has to be built over time. So it has to take time to nurture the for the relationship to be nurtured. So here's the drill. So for example, if I decide to say no to you, if let's say I'm your prospect. 
And after you have created the affinity, and I'm going to say no to you, are you going to be upset about this? You might say, hey, I've spent so much time on you to build the trust with you, and yet you are still saying no to me. Well, perhaps because you didn't refrain properly, establish whether the person truly wants the product. So for example, I'm a guy who don't believe cryptocurrency. So if let's say you are trying to sell me something about cryptocurrency, you are actually selling to the wrong person. You can't sell uh, something called meat to a vegetarian. So you've got to do your homework. I'm very annoyed with some people when they don't do their homework and they just anyhow whack. Ask a lot of people, I call the stupid questions. Why is this stupid? Because if they, they know that I'm a vegetarian, why would they continue like asking questions, like grueling, interrogating the other guy? Don't do that. It's just like having a conversation. When you feel that you're ready to move on, usually the other guy will tell you, hmm, sounds interesting. Since we have talked about this, this we, since we have been on this topic for a while, can you just tell me what you do? That's the point when you can introduce yourself. That's the point when you are talking about your results, your numbers of years in what you, you have done, and the results that you have for the people. That's what we call the classic what do you do statement. So practice the what do you do statement so that you can impress upon the prospects about your credibility, about the results, about the benefits with working in working with you. It's all practice. It's not like, uh, you know what, I'm an accountant and you have lost the participant. That's why you have lost the prospect. This is a sales selling conversation. Okay, so when you have got the what do you do, now you are able to present the topic if you were to ask permission. If you were to say, hey, is it okay if I show you something? And if you get a yes, now is the time to create a presentation or pitch. And you can see that this is the time when you can present your products, your services. Not earlier on, but now. Because now rapport is built, trust is built. You have gotten the permission to ask. You see the pop, you see the drill? So if I say no to you at the very beginning of the conversation, it means that you haven't qualified me properly. And when the moment, at the, again, when it be at the beginning of the conversation, when you shop to me the product and you say, hey, buy now, again, you have not done your qualification. So my teacher and my partner, Alice Mandoshian, has said that most people spend 80% of the time to pitch and 20% of the time to do research. So in Alice's world, he actually turned it upside, turned it around, and he said that he spent 80% of the time to pre-qualify clients, and then 20% of the time to nurture the relationship and close. Because when you have done the pre-qualification, when you know that the person likes cryptocurrency, ah, that's the time when you can present the topic, your products, your benefits, your features, or whatever, and then you can close the post, you can close the prospect. There's a less chance of getting a no or rejection from the prospect if you have done your pre-qualification problem. That's the reason why in selling we are talking about not pushing hard to get a person to say yes and put person down and say, hey, you know what? If you don't buy, you suck. You don't do that. You can actually create affinity, build rapport, build trust. And when it's a time to present, you present. So what we have gone so far, gone through so far in the last 10 minutes, well, in essence, you learn that sales is not about pushing your product and shove it to the face of the other prospect and say, buy now. You're not doing that. Selling cycle requires you to, number one, do 80%, spend 80% of the time to pre-qualify your prospects so that you have less chance of being rejected. Number two, be interested. It's not about you, it's about the other guy. So create affinity, build rapport, build trust. Remember my Jackism says that trust is not built overnight, it is built over time. 
once you have this trust built, the rapport is built, when the other guy, the prospect, asks you what do you do, that's when you are able to share in a very short period of time your credibility, your results, and why should the prospect work with you. And this has to be practiced. What's the word, please? That's right. You have to practice, and you can't have things like er, uh, ah, uh, or er, uh, ma. You will lose the prospect immediately, okay? So finally, when you have been given permission to pitch, that's the time you pitch. And after you pitch, you close if you have to. Okay, sometimes, of course, after the pitch, you may not be able to close immediately. That's fine. I'm not saying that after you pitch, you will close successfully on the spot. You might have to have another conversation. You might have another meeting to close, but that's okay because you're almost there. How many of you realize that if you follow these few steps in the selling cycle, selling is no longer uh, something that is painful. In fact, you should be able to enjoy the selling process because it's going to be fun, it's going to be interactive, it is highly engaging. And you know what? The best benefit of all is you have less chance or lower chance of being, which is kind of like the number one thing most people don't like then because of the rejection, they don't like to sell, okay? So I hope that this short clip helps you understand that selling can be fun. And you know what? I will help you understand more about sales. And, you, and as a result, I want to leave a comment below later on. I want you to go to my teacher, my partner, Alice Mandoshian's podcast show, All Selling Aside because it is a weekly podcast where Alice, my teacher and my partner, helps you understand that ethical selling by way of storytelling is the key. And this is a very, very powerful process. And you can listen to 25 minutes each week, just 25 minutes to listen to my teacher, Alice, on his podcast, All Selling Aside. I didn't ask him that I want, I, he didn't ask me to promote his show, I well, just thought that because I am the one who is immersed in his teaching, because now I'm working as a partner with him, I want to make sure that if you follow me, you also immerse in his teaching because his teaching works. So on my own account, I'm promoting his show and he doesn't know that. So I will leave the link below. Visit, subscribe to All Selling Aside, uh, my, my, my teacher, Alex Mandoshian's podcast show which you only need to spend 25 minutes a week to understand the ethical selling is the way forward by storytelling. Jack Wong here, and thank you for watching this short live -like, uh, Facebook Live. Look forward to working with you. And if you have any comments, questions, drop below, and let me see if I'm able to help you. Without further ado, remember, allsellingaside.com is the podcast show by my teacher and my partner, Alice Mendoza. Check one here. I'm signing off now. Best wishes.